tools are how artists convey their art to the world. And as a videographer, I keep my tools in my bag. If you don't know, we just came back from Japan with a fire, fire, fire video that you need to check out. And I brought all my best tools with me. So if you like any of the videos that's on my page, whether it's Instagram or YouTube, or you're just seeing them for the first time, I'm gonna show you what I shot them with. Because every single one of those things is in this bag. First off, shout out, this is a Tyrion bag. This is my first actually official like camera bag. It's super dope, but I'm gonna let me show you it real quick. But before I show you what's in it, make sure you samurai slash that like button. Go ahead and do that for me real quick. All right, there you go, appreciate it, yeah. All right, next up, let me see if I can zip this real quick, is the battery packs. So these battery packs, especially if you're traveling, are super duper important. You're not gonna be going on vacation and sitting in your hotel room. At least I hope you're not doing that. So you need to get battery packs. You need to make sure that you can contact everybody by your phone being on. You gotta make sure your phone's on by having these battery packs. We had a lot of stuff in Japan too, because since we're not from Japan, we had to make sure that we had the Wi-Fi box open. Uh, that was how we communicated with everybody and called everybody. If you don't have that, then you can't get around like that. Like even now in Japan, if you have an iPhone, you can travel around with the card, the transit card, which is called the Suki card on your phone. So your phone dies, you're fucked. You need to make sure your phone's alive. In general, you need to do that. But in Japan, as far as travel for us, we had to make sure we had a couple of these. I don't think we had four of them. I had two, My Nuri had one, and maybe Raya had one too. So we had a bunch of us had bad, these battery packs. Make sure you have them. They're so cheap now, y'all have no excuse now. Like, buy a $60 one. They last for like seven hours straight. This is not every really expensive one too. This is like more of the cheaper ones on the cheaper side. But we had one that we spent a lot of money on, um, and it's great. I actually lost my $60 one. I need to buy another one. I'm so mad I can't show it in this video. <laughs> Okay, next up is the Samsung SSDs. This one's actually mine. This is actually Raya's, which I think, I don't know if she knows I still have this. I might have to buy this off her. But these are how I save most of my memory. Um, I don't record off of a regular DSLR. I record off of a cinema camera. And that's why this looks crisply, nicely, sexily in 6K because I'm filming in very high quality. You can't just record anything on a little micro SD that just slides on the side. I can. It won't last that long. It's not going to last that long at all. And since we're doing run and gun stuff, you got to get the big boys. These itself are lifesavers. They're really fast to write to and they're really quick to go from one side, one side to the other. I'm talking about as far as my computer to my camera and vice versa. One terabyte on this one, two on this one. And it filled up <laughs> before we got a chance to leave the, the country. So. I don't think you really need these, especially for a running gun stuff like me. I'm a very different type of creator. Running gunning with a black magic, it's it's not normal. <laughs> Most people do this for commercial work. I'm doing this for his YouTube channel. But even if you don't, this is good for storing memory too. It's one terabyte. Hard drives are a lot more capability of having a bigger storage unit. So if you're trying to store a lot of shit and take it on the go, it's better to get a hard drive because you can get more bang for your buck but it doesn't write as fast. So that's why stuff like this exists in the first place. Not just for cinema people, but for storing stuff, for storing stuff as well. Don't Know Wisdom, it's a fashion brand here in Atlanta. And Latif, shout out to my friend Latif, it's actually his brand. Okay, first and foremost, let's talk about this bag. Uh, Drake has been caught wearing the glasses from this brand. It's a really, really fire brand. But we're not talking about the glasses because the bag that you get when you buy it is really nice. It's like satin or whatever material this is. And uh, I put all of my yen in it. So like, boom, this is a 500 yen coin. It looks really nice, by the way, too. This will probably give me some lunch, like a big lunch at uh, McDonald's. And this is 100 yen. This will probably get me, you know, a spot at the arcade. All right, cameras, let's get to this first camera. This is a Vivtar V3800N. Uh, this camera I got for zero dollars and zero cents from my good friend Laquan, who's you've seen in the Adult Swim video. If you know, y'all seen that, then you've seen the guy I'm talking about. I actually put a little uh, 
thing from Japan on here. He gave some guy from Japan gave me this for free. Little thing on top. So amazing. I think if you wanted to get your hands on one of these, it's around a hundred bucks, I think. Um, film cameras are really coming into style because of the uh, the look that comes off of them. As artificial and as great as we make things to look authentic, for some reason, film just isn't ha- easy to replicate like people think it is. And as good as like technology has come throughout the years people are still want that film look and i'm so happy this is going to be my first camera that y'all will y'all see some stuff from so look out for some film pictures in the future i'm going to moment calm with this so we'll see but i took this to japan it was fun even though i didn't get to take no pictures back it was cool to have this um you know in the clutch all right let me tell you a little story real quick back my third year of school i graduated with associate's degree and i started working and i needed a camera because i really really wanted to get really deep into this podcast that i just started with my friends i go to youtube and i do my deep dive and i rabbit hole into what the best camera i could get for is i start looking at specs even though i don't know specs that well but i'm like you know piecing stuff together between creator and another creator and another creator and figuring out that the camera that i want is a canon not just any canon a Canon SL2 and I bought it in white um, a couple years ago and this is the first DSLR I've ever bought it's the first series camera I've ever gotten um, ended up buying lenses for it later this is a 24 millimeter this is actually the second lens I ever bought the first one was a 50 millimeter that thing's gone someone stole that shout out to you I hope that you broke it because I don't want you to use it I wish I still had it but this camera you don't see too many people with this one. I always see this camera in black. I never see it in white. I've only seen this camera one time in white and that was at the first DreamCon. Shout out to the guy that I saw have it. Uh, but this camera, I love this camera, man. This is a Canon that shoots in 60 frames per second, which that's all I really need. I've also, that's all I ever needed. I still only need that really, if you think about it. It shoots pretty well pictures, but mostly I like it for the video. Um, I don't use it no more though. I'm in cinema land now, so I don't I don't use this, but I really want to stream with this camera. I have streamed with this camera and it's really, really nice. People like I've gotten more compliments streaming with this camera than actually streaming with my black magic. And you know, maybe lighting is a fact and all that, but like this is really great. I, this is really great imagery. I think people take for granted that you see some of the cinema stuff on this channel, some of the cinema stuff on my Instagram, and they're like yeah this is not really doing it uh this is a 700 dollars camera it it don't don't say it's not nothing this is really nice see this shit that's continuous shot it has a lot of cool stuff um that you kind of don't need to be the expert at and that's what i like about if you go through the ui it kind of shows you all the stuff that you need to kind of get started you can just go straight into automatic and take great pictures um, that's me personally i got my first client off that stuff so it's really really nice i shoot everything on this camera in 60 frames and just take it down because you never know you know what i mean and it really is a great starter camera i think now you can get the body for probably just 500 dollars um you know which obviously yeah it's a couple hundred dollars but when you start really getting into your cameras once you have a camera everything is money you can sell this lens for a couple for a hundred get a hundred back invest it into another lens or add it to another pile of money to another lens and that's what's really good about like being into videography or photography all i'm trying to say is make sure you invest in yourself well because if i didn't invest into this i wouldn't have gotten that and i'm very grateful for both so this is the first camera i actually bought in japan and it's called the Olympics Olympus. It's called the Olympus Auto Eye. I got this for a thousand yen, which is six dollars, I think. This thing I haven't got a chance to use because when I bought it for a thousand, it was in the broken aisle. It was in a broken. It was in a. Um, it was in a broken bucket. This camera was in a broken bucket, and when I picked it up from there, it said that the thousand dollar yen sign like on it. And when I went to go ask, or someone went to go ask, it just told us that something was wrong with one of the changers. Um, I could get it fixed here in Atlanta. I got a quote for it for like $200. Um, but this camera is only worth $35. So I probably won't be fixing this no time soon. Um, but it's just a good looking camera. You know, sometimes you appreciate things that you don't get a chance to see that much. American cars in Japan look amazing to Japanese people because they've never seen it. Like, if you see a Ferrari in America, that's amazing. 
If you see a, if you see a Ferrari in Japan, you'll never see one again. Camera, I don't think I'll ever run into here in Atlanta. So I went out my way to get it just to now discover that this camera actually exists. Okay, so my next thing is 35 millimeter cinema lens from Rokinon. This is this is my ride or die. This is this is the camera lens that you always see me with. It's a very long lens. I've I've actually broke it twice. I had to fix it twice. Uh, but this this lens is just really really nice. On my Black Magic Cinema, it really is close, so it makes stuff look really cinematic. Um, it really turns my 35 into maybe an 85. I haven't done the math, but I think that's still how it works. You, there's a lot of people that want that blurry background look in a in a uh, a picture and closer lenses, like lenses that get a little closer to your face where you're the subject could make the bokeh effect a lot more easier to see. It doesn't get everything, but it gets a lot of things that I need to do. Sometimes I do have to go a little wider, but for the most part, I like the 35 for a lot of situations. Now here's a lens that I love and I never use, and that's the 85 millimeter. It's, I never have to use this lens. I probably are gonna trade this or pay or sell it because I just don't ever use 85 millimeter. Um, I'm actually gonna get this cleaned and probably like just sell it online on a regular camera that is like not crop centered, like this camera's crop centered. It would just be a really good camera. It's really close. You know, it gets a little nice bokeh effect. Y'all ever see the videos or pictures where they just have a nice blurry background? This camera lens is probably really good for that if it wasn't for my camera. Like maybe another Canon that's like full center, some shit like that, maybe. Remember me? It's just a nice camera, really heavy paperweight that I don't use. All right, next is something that I actually had to rebuy for a different lenses. This is an ND filter. I'm sorry, this is a UV filter. I have the ND filter on uh, that camera right there. These are just filters that you put on lenses to kind of help out with some looks. Like the ND filter, I think is for like leveling everything out versus a UV filter, which is for obviously blocking UV rays uh, to your camera. Not too well versed in them. I think this is for maybe helping out with like uh, flares or something like that haven't really looked into them but i don't use this one that much um i use more so that uh nd filter because it kind of makes all the colors look exactly not too away from not too crazy from each other um and look at this cute little thing i got from japan i actually bought this in japan it says a thousand yen the next thing that was in my bag is the insta 360. i actually don't own this insta 360 but I asked my friend Ben, shout out to Ben. He's the one who let me borrow this and went to Japan with it. And I took so many dope videos with it, like going to Shibuya and going around Akihabara and most importantly, driving at Big Bang in, Yama, in, uh, in Yamato. It was a really, really fun experience having, having this thing. The quality isn't the best, at least on these, but the more money you have to invest into this, the more the image will come out amazing. It's just a great experience to go back and look at my stuff and not just look at it with one looking, uh, nice cinematography looking look. But I get to look at it from the eyes inside of that car. It's like, you don't see too many of those. This is my wallet. Um, this is not a normal wallet, obviously. It's more one of more so one of those uh, minimalist type wallets. In my wallet right now, I have a good fortune from the Japanese temple. It's in Tokyo. Um, I have a best fortune thing that I keep in here. I've had it since I came back from Japan. But the reason why this wallet is important and why I feel like people need to know about it is because whether it's from Ridge or any other brand, this minimalist wallet is really good to like keep on your body because you can not dig in, unfold it, and do what you gotta do. My Suki Pass, which is for trains or whatnot, is right here on the side. As far as not being in Japan, I mean, anything you wanna tap to pay if you put it on this side, it'll probably do you just justice. This is very small, but very, very easy to use. 
very versatile type wallet. As you can see, I love versatility. I think everybody should kind of switch to a more slick wallet like this. Okay, going up next is my iPhone. Um, if you don't know, I really, really love Galaxy. Samsung really did a thing with the camera on the Galaxy, and it's funny because since they've gotten a bad rap, since you know Snapchat and Instagram have really, really compressed the way that the image comes out, people have given it such a bad rap that I like it even more. I'm not trying to be like one of those hipster type people. It's just more so that I love customizations. I've always loved customizations since like forever. You give me a chance to make my thing look like no one else's, I'm gonna fall in love with it. You know, we're living in a time where niggas don't even like ringtones. People don't like different notifications. I like that my phone sounds better than yours. I like that I can play Kendrick Lamar is not like this as my ringtone and you can't. I don't have to pay $9.99 for it. It's free for me. Everyone else in America is on iPhone and that's because it's an easier phone to lose, use. Not only that, but you know, there's a bunch of other stuff that this video is not about why everyone has a iPhone. So I've always had one on the side, um, but I ended up getting a newer one and this is the iPhone. I have no idea what iPhone this is. I think this is the, what is this? I don't know what iPhone this is. Nine, eight, 11, I don't know, bro. I don't know. But I do use this iPhone when I'm at home. When I come home, I don't use my regular phone no more. I try my best to put my phone on a charger and just use this one. Um, my this thing has this thing has all my Notion stuff, all my other like productivity stuff, and of course when I have to hit up everybody else that only likes using iPhone, I'll help them up on this. I've more and more used this phone more than my regular phone just because other phones having problems right now. I've had my other phone for like four years now at this point it's been pretty strong but i've dropped that thing so much people have tried to break that phone and it's just been going through it and still been passing through so this is my nice in-between phone that i use for productivity and like um doing stuff like poking up the insta360 to this one while recording me recording the insta360 off with this one if that makes sense my next item is my galaxy now my Galaxy is my favorite phone. I don't think I'm ever gonna move somewhere else. Samsung has made such a great product for me because regardless of how you feel personally about the iPhone versus Galaxy conversation, it's just much more customizable to have a Galaxy. I mean, you heard me say it with the whole conversation beforehand. I just love the camera that's on this, the screen that's on this, all the stuff that's built into the phone the fact alone that i just like the phone off of just the, the productivity on the home screen is why i'll take this phone over the other one we, i've had widgets on this phone for over seven years well through the old galaxies and the lg motion that was probably my first galaxy ever i've always had a galaxy and they've always made a module so i can't get off the system it's just too nice. There's too many things that's kind of the same too. Text messages through my wind, through my Galaxy, to my computer, to connecting with all my other stuff. It The product itself is just so innovative to me that now that everyone's kind of caught up with kind of the old stuff that we have, I'm kind of not buying the hype with all the other stuff. I've, I more so would love if everybody was on Galaxy and everybody was on like an Android system. But you know, that's not a popular thing to say. And I could care less about your green bubbles and your blue bubbles. You can text me on Instagram if you care about that type of stuff. This phone has held me down for a long time. And for the last four years, I don't think any other phone will beat it. This is a eight set Allen wrench. These are important because I have a Black Magic 6K and you can't just carry this willy-nilly with just the camera you have to rig it up it's super duper nice but it's really really trash if you can't hook stuff up to them the base of the camera it probably only lasts 22 minutes if i didn't have like the things to add on to it maybe even less i'll be honest with you my camera does not last long without an external battery uh my camera needs a hookup like memory wise and if you put a micro sd it might not last long Long story short, you need to hook stuff up to this camera to really boost what it can do because you, on normal circumstances, it still won't last that long. Stuff like this cage is what I have to buy and I put it over my camera and it hooks up with stuff like this and it's just super module, meaning that I can just add and, and customize it as much as I want. Stuff like this, I have to hook it up with, with an Allen wrench and have Allen wrenches uh, 
screwing these screws into making this easier for me. So the SSD may fill in here. Long story short, this thing is when it's gonna save me from really customizing on the go. Really just customizing in general because holding a big ass cinema camera is not normal. And the last thing you wanna be doing is have something be a little loose and now you gotta screw it in. You don't know what it might be. So these come in handy and I have to bring these with me because if I, something goes wrong, shoot over video over and i just can't be having that Last but not least is my black magic, which I can't show you because we wouldn't be able to film this video. This has been my dream camera for a very long time and I've had it now for I think three years. Um, ever since the pandemic happened, I used to do a contract with the city of Atlanta and we got to work with these cameras. And after working with them for a while and actually dreaming of having one and actually having it in my hand, I realized I need to get one. So I went ahead and cashed out on two things. One, a PC that can handle 6K footage and number two, the Blackmagic 6K Pro. And that's the camera that we're filming on right now. It shoots up to 6K. Um, it's a really, really nice looking image that comes out this camera. The biggest setback for the camera is that the battery is dookie, it is booter, it is dumb. But the best thing about it is that that's not gonna stop you from making your stuff. Because for an extra $100, you can buy an external battery and it will last forever. You gotta rig it up, it's not that portable. You definitely can't put it in your pocket like it suggests, but the Blackmagic 6K Pro and the Blackmagic 6K are one of the best cameras I've ever worked with. So I had to at least get my hands on one. And now having one for a long time, I don't ever see myself leaving the Blackmagic market. And the Blackmagic community on Reddit is pretty helpful. You know, they were a day late with my help. I helped myself out. But the, I think the people that have a Blackmagic know the other Blackmagic people know quality. It's just your best bang for your buck. If you... If you're like me, you would wanting a red and then realize you didn't have to get a red because reds are like $6,000 and up for that camera. Um, and Black Magic start at, you can get one for a grand now. You can make a movie with something less than this. Less than this. And you don't have to spend a couple thousand dollars. You can spend $1,000 and find this. Um, I just think the biggest thing to me is that they have really, really have gone up with technology nowadays. And the biggest thing now is that you can now own a movie camera that can fit in the palm of one hand. All right, y'all, that is everything that is in my bag. I have showed y'all every single little thing that I took with me to Japan. Um, if you can, make sure you like this like. If you can, make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe to we are trying to get monetized, ladies and gentlemen, so make sure that you go ahead and help me out by subscribing to the page. Also, if you haven't seen, go ahead and check out the Japan videos. Shoot. Even if you did see the Japan videos, go check them out again. Like, I worked hard on them. Hopefully, we'll do this again when I upgrade my stuff. I don't have a drone yet. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm trying to get a couple other things to... to help out with the videos so we'll probably do a what's in my bag video later i'm actually gonna get a different bag too and hopefully maybe that might be a more sponsored video you know what i'm saying um but we'll see how that goes until then appreciate y'all and i'll see y'all next time all right peace